Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> My first Christmas tree of the year. Wonderful. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Leave, yeah. it, leave it to my wife to make that possible. It's great to have you here, mate. I can't uh, can't believe you're coming down to Australia very, very soon on very, very short notice. How's this whole kind of experience been? Very, yeah. very short notice, yes. Um, we, we made the conscious decision because since getting back in the band, the demand for the band, thank goodness, the demand for the band has been awesome. Yep. Uh, but that's led us to spending like the majority of the past two years in the States um, or just recently, I think we finally ventured outside of the States and did a, a festival in Mexico. Yeah. Not counting the military stuff we did last Christmas, but um, we, we made the conscious decision that we wanted to do stuff overseas in 2025, really yep. concentrate. And Australia was one of our top things, you know, it was one of our top little marks that we wanted to check. Um, but to be completely honest with you, I've been to Australia in Australian summers and I've been to Australia in Australia's winters yeah. and I personally hate the sun, which is one of the main reasons I moved to England, you know, yeah. besides the fact that I got married to an English girl, I, I hate the sun. So I was like, dude, yes, I agree. I'm on pay, I'm on board with everybody. We got to get back to Australia. We got to get a big drowning pool back to Australia. Um, but I want to do it during their winter time because the summertime, I don't leave. If I'm in Australia in the summer, I'm not leaving my hotel room. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we don't have an ozone layer. That's the problem. I don't you, think you, you feel, do. You feel like you cook. <laughs> like I'm a ginger and a blonde fella myself. So I'm like the two worst shades you could be to live right. in Australia. And I just, I go outside and I'm like, I can hear my skin sizzling. Great. Cool. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. I, I literally, I get like a, like a hive like rash from the sun. So it isn't just that I dislike the sun. I actually like, it's a painful experience to, to be in the sun for me. Yeah, it so, dislikes uh, you more than you would dislike you. Yes. Something. <laughs> yeah. I, I made a bad deal somewhere. I pissed someone off. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, but, uh, so at the end of the day, this thing came about, uh, the offer, uh, the the whole thing fell down with uh with CKY and 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 Alien Ant Farm, uh, and they asked us to uh, step in as kind of a co headline situation with Alien, and uh, it was just the timing wasn't ideal because yeah. there's a lot to get done in a very short period of time when you're talking about traveling overseas to do tours and all that, um, but with AJ Mata with Phoenix uh, and and John. Uh, good people really helping us try to get the ducks in a, in a row here. So, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a hectic situation. Like, as you said, it's very short notice and very, very quick to get things done. But yeah. at the same time, we wanted to get to Australia this year in 2025, uh, it was one of our top things. So we, we took the opportunity without, without too much thought at all. Now, now I'm thinking about now that you've mentioned likely coming down here and winter. The last time you were at least here, where you opened for Static X, and I think that was June, July, so our winter. So that was that was kind of the plan to kind of sneak in with someone during that time as that's well. That's what my hope was. That was yeah. my that was that's that's really the only option I gave them. Yeah, I was like I was like you know because Canada was also on the list, and I was like as far as uh, Australia and Canada goes, you know, Canada cannot be in their winter. Yeah. Otherwise, we will die. <laughs> and and as far as Australia goes, it has to be in their winter, or I will die. <laughs> so that, that was the that was the stipulations of these two things of, of those two. But uh, the uh, it, it's 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 not working. It's not working out real well for me. But <laughs> what do the rest of the boys in the band think? Are they just kind of like shut up? Oh Ryan, no, they love it, dude. Like, the yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, the other three guys. You got two guys born and raised in Louisiana and oh, in, in, uh, in New Orleans. Yeah, and then the, the, their only other existence they know is the fact that they then moved from there to Dallas, Texas. The other guy is born and raised in Dallas, Texas. So, so they're all about it. They're like, man, yeah, because because originally, to tell you the truth, real quick, hmm. uh, our February was supposed to be. The booking agent came to us and was like, "Okay, we're going to do Canada in February." And we're like, do you have, "What?" Are you stupid? No, <laughs> that, that, that's a horrible idea. Yeah. So when when this all of a sudden at, in the twelfth hour, all of a sudden this idea, this offer came to the table to to step in with Alien. 
um, and do Australia, the guys were like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to Australia where the sun is. Forget that whole Canada winter thing. No, no, we're, we're doing Australia. So even if, even if I would have voted against it, I would have been outvoted, but no, just the opportunity. We were, we were all jumping on to, to get to come over and spend some time with the, with the people there in Australia that allow us to be who we are the past 20 plus years. So it, yeah. it's going to be a good time. It, it, it really is. And it's kind of like, it, it's, Kind of a, a tour that is that early 2000s nostalgia for a lot of people because Drowning Pool, for a lot of people, they're almost one of those gateway bands in the middle. I know Metallica and that were the gateway band back in the day. You know, Inner Sandman came out. But Bodies was really that song for a lot of people in the early 2000s. And it's still like it's over half a billion streams on Spotify now. So it's just one of those things where Drowning Pool do kind of almost have that legacy stamp at this point of a band. Yeah. Yeah. And how to feel joining after or coming back after all this time how what was the process of that it was you know when we when we parted ways we thought it was going to be like two or three months oh when we parted ways that's all it was we were taking a break yeah and uh that break ended up lasting like 12 13 years so it was it it was something that i definitely missed i mm. I, I missed jamming uh playing and and really record you know writing yeah. with stevie mike and cj um and and come to find out it was it was a mutual a mutual missing um <laughs> but uh i i was in a pub here in england i've lived in england now for seven years yeah. uh because the skies are gray and there's no sun um but the uh I got a text message from Stevie, the bass player, and Stevie is a born, if you don't know a Texan, Stevie is born and raised in Texas. Yeah. They don't have a lot to say. A Texas man is very, he's very somber. He doesn't have a lot to say. When they do talk, probably best off to listen. Yeah. But they don't have a lot to say. They're not big on small talk. They're not big on, you know, you're not going to catch a, a guy from Texas watching The View anytime <laughs> soon. It's a... Uh, so all of a sudden Stevie's texting me one night or messaging and like an hour and a half later, we're still messaging. And for the 12 or 13 years that we were apart from each other, Stevie and I would hit each other up once in a while, but we're both big American football fans. So it would yeah. always have something to do with American football. This time it was just like small talk. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I was like, dude, like after an hour and a half, I was like, are you sure you're all right? He's like, dude, yeah, I'm fine, man. Everything's great. And about three minutes later, he's like, how would you feel about maybe getting together and doing some reunion shows? And I was like, without, I, I, I may have sprained a thumb trying to respond. I was like, yes, let's do this. Yes. That, that sounds awesome, dude. And then like three, three days later, their manager called me, their manager at the time called me and was like, yeah, you're back in the band. We got two weeks. We got a show with Pantera coming up. We, we got to get the show ready. It was like, okay. And yeah. so it was just like, yeah, it was bam, bam. Two weeks later, I'm flying into Dallas, Texas, jumped in the studio or jumped in the re rehearsal spot with the guys for a couple of days before our first shows out and uh luckily it was like walking into a time warp because yeah. we just it was like we were never apart from each other we just we started picking up right where we left off just jamming and for everybody i mean it's just gotten everybody's it's it sparked everybody's fire we got so much new material oh, yeah. and uh it's it's been awesome it's everybody's just gotten we're still moving around like we're the age we are, but it's definitely taken some years off of us as far as our just our excitement and our in our in the fire that's lit underneath of us. And it's a beautiful thing to see because not every band has the luxury of being able to do reunion tours. I know, like I mentioned them earlier, Static X had that fear of does anyone want to see Static X live anymore in this day and age? Right. Uh, I remember Dino from Fear Factory after you know Milo or Milo, the new sync company, and his big thing was. People want to see Fear Factory, and luckily it worked out for those guys. It doesn't work out for everyone. So was there ever that kind of fear, or was it like, I don't even care, I'm back with the boys, we're just going to go out there and play, we just hope people like it again? There wasn't a fear at all, mm. no. It was, uh, when I when I first joined the band back in 05 or whatever it was, I was, I always feel sorry I always, I always have a part of me that really empathizes for Jason Jones, who was the singer between me and me and Dave. Yeah. Uh, it was a singer for the album desensitized. Um, it had to be harder for him than it was for me. Cause for mm -hmm. me, 
excuse me, for me, the fan base, the core fan base. <coughs> I apologize. Rob. No, you're right. <laughs> the core fan base was familiar with the fact that Dave and I were friends. Mm. They were they were familiar with the fact that we were very close. From I mean, my my son before Dave passed. My youngest son is his middle name is Dave because of Dave Williams. Oh, wow. um, he he was a he was probably my best friend in, in the in the business on the business side of things uh, that I'd met after having gotten able to do it professionally. And uh, it, you know it was it was his mom that actually made the phone call to me that that sealed the deal that, oh, that made okay. it okay for me to feel like it was. She called me one time and. It, I'm going left field with a you. Guy for a guy for it. But the guys got up back in 2005. The guys got a hold of me and was like, a, "How would you feel about getting back into music again?" Because at that point, I'd been out of music for nine months because I'd quit Soil and I, I, I was just burnt out. I'm, a, I'm a small town guy from from Indiana, and the disgusting crap that you run into in the industry really burnt me out. Yeah, and I, I had to step away from it, and I had no desire to get back in it. It was only these three guys that would have gotten me back in, which is what they did. And uh, but I agreed to to fly down to Dallas and jam with them. Uh, if nothing else, just the experience to be back with my friends again and uh, and jamming. Um, but then after I got back home to Indiana, it was actually Dave's mom, Joe, called me. And uh, as I'm driving down the the up some backcountry road in Indiana, and she's like, "Where are you at?" And I was like, "Joe, I'm in I'm in Indiana." She goes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so one of Dave's old schoolmates was is in a band here in Dallas, and they rehearse right underneath Drowning Pool's rehearsal room. And he said that this past weekend that he heard Drowning Pool up there playing. He said, but it wasn't Jason singing. That the singer sounded a lot like that guy from Soil. <laughs> and uh, she goes, so I was wondering where you were. And I said, well, Joe, I said, I, you know, I'm pulled over the side of the road right now, but I can honestly tell you I'm in, I'm in Indiana right now. She goes, oh, okay. <laughs> well, just so you know, Charlie, Dave's dad, Charlie and I have been talking about it. And we just wanted you to know that if anybody was ever going to do this, Dave would want it to be you. And I was like, oh, oh. all right. Yeah. Well, there's. I was still on the fence that you know I loved the guys, but I, I was like I I was burnt, hmm. and uh, but that was the that was you can't say no to Mama Williams. So that was the uh, that was the uh, that was the thumbs up that it was green light to it had to happen. But um, I already I already know the original question. I, yeah, I, I've that, gotten sidetracked. So I dragged you down this path. I apologize. <laughs> I, I was just um, thinking that yeah, if you said no, you'd probably get taken off the Christmas card list for the years to come. <laughs> hey. But they're being being back with the guy, it's it's been that man. It's been yeah. you know they're the only guys that could have got me back in back in the day, and so it was a no brainer to get back with them again. And it, it just it's lit the fire underneath all of us. You know it's just it, it's it's gonna be awesome to be able to bring this bring this little circus to, to Australia here shortly. Oh, and I can't wait for it. I've been, you are one of the bands that have managed to escape me from all these years seeing live. So I finally finally get to tick that off my list so very excited for that but you mentioned you know the excitement writing this new material because the new song as well it's got that it's got that drowning pool sound like it's just got that drowning pool sound from the guitars kick ass vocals the video is amazing for it as well you said you are writing is there plans for it? like well of course there's going to be plans for a new album in the future but how's it shaping up like how are you feeling about it Great, you know, we released Revolution, the final Amen. We released, we, we, we released that because it was the first song that came together in the studio. Oh. And when I say came together, I mean finished. Yep. Um, the demand for the band has been so great, thankfully, that we've been so busy fulfilling live uh, appearances and and then tours and everything that we've gotten so little time to actually record. At one point. Um, on the last U.S. run we did, we actually flew our producer out and he spent like four or five days on the road with us just so we could try to make some forward progress with some of these songs that oh. we've got. Because we've had so little time outside of touring to actually, like the little time that we've gotten, I want to go home and sleep in my own bed for a day or two. <laughs> yeah. So so we've had such little time to actually get any recording done that we've got so much material. And uh 
because it was uh, Elena, uh, CJ's wife, actually said to me shortly after we uh, after us getting back together, she was like, "Thank you so much." She goes, she goes, um, you guys getting back together. It's just like, she goes, I got my husband back. You know, oh. she goes, see, you know, as, as you know, she goes, CJ, so much of his existence is music. Mm. And, and, um, and she goes, and he's just, he's, he's not had the, he, you know, I don't know the last time I saw him pick up his guitar. And that's, this is a guy that, you know, he, he always has a guitar in his hand doodling back in yeah. the day. And she goes, and since you guys have gotten back together, he's just walking around the house with his guitar on again. He's up at three o'clock in the morning writing music. He's she goes, it's like I've got my husband back again. And uh, and that's the way we've all been. I mean, yeah. we've all just been on fire. And, and the, the the material is, is, is a great re- reflection of that. And so actually, we've got some shows coming up here in Dallas in December. Or not Dallas, but in Texas, yeah, because it's a, it's like a country of its own. So we we got some shows in Texas in in December, and I'm staying for for several days afterwards to get some more recordings done. Because the plan is right now we're going we're going to release another single or two between now and through uh, Australia, oh, yeah. and before the uh, before the Godsmack dates that we have with a POD in uh, Europe and in in London. Uh, but then, so yeah, the the plan is to release a couple more singles in between now and then, and then uh, we'll have a, a an album or an e at least an EP, depending on how much how much recording time we get. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a, an album or an EP ready for release in two, in twenty twenty five. And it's a big difference now with stuff like Spotify being around and all that. While it's not the best financially for bands that existing, it does allow bands to kind of go here's a new song and kind of drip feed and almost be, it's almost like a, a live service to fans going, Oh, here's a bit of progress of what we're doing. Um, yeah. It, in the pocket, I guess at the end of the day, we can say Lars Ulrich was right. Maybe he kind of worded it a bit funny back in the day when he was talking about all these different music sharing systems, but uh, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. And yeah, so many bands have the opportunity like you do just to release a single, get it in people's ears. They can listen to it straight away is a magical thing, but I wanted to touch because I didn't ask you already. How was that first show back? What was the energy like for you before you got out on stage? Man, I think for the first time in my career, I had a little nerves. Oh. Because, you know, I hadn't, it was such a, it was such a wham, bam, you know, it, it was, it went from a, a conversation of possibly doing some reunion shows to all of a sudden I'm three days later, I'm back in the band and we've got shows in two weeks Yeah. to, so I I'm walking around, I'm walking around England with my headphones on listening to songs I hadn't sang in, in 13 years. Yeah. Um, just trying to remember, you know, to be honest with you, yeah. 13 years since it's muttering these words and um, some of the songs I didn't even write to begin with. So it, it was, it was a man, you got to remember this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that first time, that first time taking the stage with the guys, I was excited to be doing it again with the guys to be going up there on that stage with the guys again. Um, but there was also for the first time in my career that I can remember, I actually had a bit of nerves. Cause I mean, you get to that when, when you, when this is like any other, it's like, it's not it's an awesome job don't yeah. get me wrong but it's like any other job but when it's what you do it's what you do mm. um there's no nerves involved um so for the first time in my career i really felt like some some anxiety <laughs> about uh about you know i don't want to mess this up you know yeah. so yeah that, that, that first show was there was that unfamiliar taste of anxiety in the back of my throat that's got to be exciting at the same time too. Just that uh, nervous energy that you can kind of explode out on stage, or was it really a little bit more crippling than what uh, I'm kind of making it out to be? You, you know that set. That set had a moment. There was a, a moment in that set where I was able to walk off the stage, and CJ's CJ and Mike are doing some guitar drum stuff during during that particular set that yeah. we had at that time, and. Uh, I remember that break coming along and walking off the side of stage and just being like, okay, <laughs> all right, cool, made it. Yep. And then it really was, then from that moment on, then it was just, it was like, it, 
once I realized that it was old hat, that it was that it was really a, a just a matter of when you hear the music the lyrics come yeah the whole time leading up to that i was worried about remembering this and remembering that but then once getting up there and, re and realizing that no it's all still there it's, yeah. it's all it's it's all back there i just need to hear that riff and uh once that little break happened i'm sitting on sitting on the side of the stage having that moment of reflection that yeah let's do as soon, soon as it was time for me to step back out there again it was just yeah it, it was you just need to rip good. the band-aid off at the end of the day. You just exactly. you, know, you, exactly. need, you, know, you need to stop hesitating, just rip it off. You can go rip right. a couple of hairs out, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like, but it is so exciting. I'm so glad. And like I said, I'm very glad. Like you guys touring with Alien Ant Farm and uh the local sport of Frankenbock as well. Fantastic Australian band. I don't know if you've ever heard them before. I think you're gonna really like them if you get the no, chance. because everything has been happening so fast that I actually yeah. one of the emails I sent recently was to get because i think there's a couple different bands on mm -hmm. the australian runs there's one band opening up for certain shows and one band opening up for a couple others i believe yep. so i did request to, to uh to, to get some links so i can so i can hear some of the stuff um so i am unfamiliar that's that's no discredit oh, nice. i do i'm a i i uh, me and cj is he's my best friend but uh we are so polar different like you could be on tour for a year with one day off and that one day cj would be looking to see what shows are in town because he wants to go to a concert yeah. me on the other hand dude when i'm home i'm i'm listening to sports talk radio i'm 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 in you know i'm i'm spending time with my with with family and stuff um so I, I I'm not the most hip guy on what's happening in the music industry as far as bands go. So so it's by far no discredit to anybody that I may be unfamiliar. It's because I I just I I'm so disconnected when it comes to when I have some free time. I'm not in the music. Uh, if if I'm not dealing with the business side of it, I'm yeah. I'm, I, I'm I'm broken away. So I've requested because I've, I've heard nothing but good things from the people that have put this together. Yeah. So I'm really I'm really really looking forward to hearing the guys. And you probably shut out from it a bit, but I can't believe once you guys got announced to fill in for CKY, social media kind of exploded in the most positive way. You see all these people going, like selecting going to the shows, like the Facebook events come up and it's like going, going, going. I've seen so many people I've known for years. I'd be like, I had no idea you're a Drowning Pool fan. They're like, yeah, of course. Like, how do you think I got in the metal back in the day, you idiot? Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I forget we're all, we, I forget we're all in our mid 30s. And, you know, all these albums came out when we were in high school. So, yeah, duh, makes a lot of sense at the end of the day. Right. But I think it's going to be a trip down memory lane for a lot of people. Not saying that you're old, but it's uh, definitely a trip down memory lane. Oh, believe lane. me. We, uh, yeah, I believe me. I feel it every day when I get out of bed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, uh, you know, I may act young, but the knees definitely act their age. <laughs> yeah, I, I laugh about that. That first time that I got back with the guys, when we walked in the recordings in the, in the rehearsal spot, I said, yeah, it really was. It was crazy just how quickly we jumped into the music. And we not only were, did we jam the songs that we were ready to rehearse for that first show together, we started jamming on tunes that, that weren't even talked about. Ah. But just because we were excited, you know, that we were excited. You know, oh, let's play full circle. Oh, let's do this. Let's let's do that. And uh, we just started jamming these tunes that that none of us had even listened to in in thirteen years. Uh, but the one thing that was different, the one thing that was different was in between songs. Mm. Was all of a sudden, you know, instead of just the, the normal chatter, there was the there was the col the collective action of everybody putting on their reading glasses and holding their phones a little bit farther away from their faces as they were reading the messages on the cell phones. That was the only thing different. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. In fact, I've got, I've got an interesting question for you as well. Do you have a favorite Drowning Pool song to perform live that isn't one of your ones? Yeah, I go bodies. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, well, no, actually, besides you know, bodies, besides bodies, bodies is awesome because of the crowd response. Yeah. Um, for me personally, right now, um, "Tear Away" Ooh. is awesome because I know where Dave was mentally when he wrote the song. I know what the song meant to him lyrically. I know that, and the song means something completely polar. I mean, it's completely opposite for me than what it yeah. meant for Dave. Yeah. But for me, there's lyrics within that song that are very even though I didn't pencil them, they're very personal to me. Everything mm -hmm. happens for reasons I just don't know. Do I really want this? Sometimes I scare myself. I just can't let you go. There's very, 
there's there's lyrics within that song that's very personal to me because they were Dave's. Yeah. And because of what they mean to me on a personal level and because they were Dave's. So that song is a very special song, even more so now yeah. than it was my first run with the guys. Um, and then there was a tune that when we decided to get back together and that first show, we never played the song Mute before in our oh. entire time together. And I was like, man, as I'm listening to these songs, refreshing my mind with them and everything, I said, I keep coming across the song Mute. What do you guys feel about doing that? And the guys like, were, the guys were like, dude, we haven't played that song since Dave was with us. That would be awesome. Yeah. So that that's one of my favorite. I love that the groove of that song yeah. is. I love the groove. I mean, that's classic drowning pool groove right there. Yeah. And I, so I, I that that C J Pierce like that's bleeding C J Pierce <laughs> right there. So uh, it's uh, I love playing that song live just from the the groove of it and the feel of it and everything. So yeah, there's there's several there's several tunes we we thrown songs in just on the spur of the moment like love and war and and stuff yeah. like that that just wasn't wasn't even a thought that all of a sudden was like hey well, let's throw this in tonight yeah. and that's one of the awesome things about being in this band not only the musicianship of the of the individuals to be able to do that but also because the band thanks to people allowing us to be around for this long yeah the band has such an, an incredible discography through the eras that uh it's it's awesome to be able to pull from all those eras and, and enjoy the, the different vibes and feels because at the end of the day musically it's always been drowning pool yeah but the different singer here and the different singer there has, has had their own little unique way of going about things and uh, so it, it's been it's been fun. it's it is fun yeah. to be able to to pull from all those different eras and to incorporate all those different eras into the live set so that the fans that may have their specific favorite moment favorite singer or whatever are, are hearing songs from their that, that drew them in you know yeah no and it, it, it's a beautiful thing that you guys actually get to do that because not everyone does and so i applaud you guys for being back doing what you guys do best and doing what you love as well and i cannot wait to see it this february mate i won't keep it too much longer i know you're a busy man today but is there anything you want to say to the australian fans before you make your way down to the blistering sun <laughs> before i burn yeah um before you burn to death is yeah. there anything uh you know what it's 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 just it's the most honest thing i can say to to anybody um just thank you yeah. you know to, i can't it's still hard for me to believe looking back that i got i got the opportunity to do this professionally mm. But then to still be able to be here twenty plus years later, and 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 being allowed to do it, and the reason we're allowed to do it is because people out there have given us the time of day, have supported the music, has has allowed us to still be around, and uh, it's just it's an amazing gift that each one of the individuals out there that that has allowed that has given us in our lives. It's just a huge thank you. Just you know, I I don't know if if I didn't have music. If I didn't have the ability to to write lyrics and get what's been stuck in here out the past 20 plus years, I'd hate to and I'd hate to know the type of person I would be mm. or, or where I might be, uh, what padded cell I might be locked up in somewhere. <laughs> so just a, such a huge thank you to everybody out there on so many different levels for allowing us to be us for 20 plus friggin years. Well, I well said, well said, and I can't wait to see you for the first time as well. Very excited, very excited. And for one, Tear Away is definitely one I wanted to hear as well. So thank you very much, my friend. We'll see you in February. Looking forward to it. You take care of yourself. And if we get a chance, if uh, if the chance may you know arises, definitely grab a hold of me and say, hey. Oh, I will. I'll talk to John. Uh, I, the, the big big fella's always hanging around somewhere. I'll go find him. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, you Cheers, take care mate. of yourself. Thank you so much for your time. No, thank you for your time. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.